Well, Halloween night, a great success for your Rockwald Heat Hawks. A 58-0 victory over Roy City. Make that two shutouts on the year. The Rockwall Heat Hawks are looking good as they head into the final game of the season. Hello, everybody. Chris Curtis here for the Rockwall Sports Center. Heath Hawk update joined by the captain of the broadcast for your Heath Hawk, Steve Deer. And Steve, uh, otherwise, pretty perfect game on Friday night. Not much to talk about it on the offense looking good, defense looking good. Everything came together. Yeah, uh, even the backups look good. A uh, lot, lot of players got in the game, a lot of stats being rolled up. Uh, probably the most complete game of the year. Uh, might have wanted to see a little bit of a stiff test going into the playoff to really get them uh, ready for the playoffs here. Didn't materialize, our team just dominated. But with the good comes the bad. Unfortunately, the Heath Hawks have lost Rico Henderson, their star running back for the season with an injury. And that's obviously disappointing for this Heath Hawk team. They seem to kind of get more injuries on that offensive side of the ball. But as we mentioned before, more kids come in and step up. And they did uh, in that second half for the Heath Hawks. Yeah, you hate, hate to lose a kid like Rico uh, for several reasons. Number one, he's been producing at an all-time high lately. Uh, fourth straight game, well over 100 yards. 150 yards and four touchdowns in the first quarter alone the other night. Uh, just a bad injury. Uh, he's meant so much to the program. Four-year starter, as we've mentioned before, the only four-year starter in the history of the Hawk program. You'd like to have that experience heading into the playoffs. So the pressure of the playoffs, bright lights are on. Things get more and more uh, difficult as time goes on. You like to have the uh, the guy with the experience, the senior there. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen, and he ends his Hawk career. Uh, that said, we've talked about this several times this year. This coaching staff really does a great job of preparing the backups. Next man up. We talked about it just last week uh, in regards to the offensive line. Next man up, uh, they've got to be ready to play. Tyler McAllister is a very good, very solid running back himself. He, uh, he can step in and do a good job. Young Tanner McAllister, he got his first offensive touches of the, the year Friday night. Ends up going over 100 yards and scoring a touchdown himself. So the McAllister brothers are going to pick up the slack, hopefully, and carry us into the playoffs. Definitely want to wish Rico the best in his recovery, and hopefully he gets to play some D1 football next year. But, of course, Coach Moss has to be happy after a 58-0 victory over Roy City this past week. Uh, we came out quick and aggressive on both sides of the football. Um, defensively, of course, they turned the ball over to us very first play and put it in the end zone quickly and then just got on a roll and 34-0 before the end of the first quarter. And, and so at that point forward, you know, we're looking forward to uh, halftime, getting all our reserves in and second half and getting the game over with and getting ready for this last ball game. And there's one more task at hand for your Rockwall Heath Hawks. They will travel to South Garland on Thursday night to take on the South Garland Colonels. Mickey Moss's former stomping grounds. Talk about what Rockwall Heath needs to do to put this one away and move on to the playoffs. Well, this is a team that we've actually become quite familiar with over the last several years. It seems like we run into them at least once a year. Two years ago, they ended up surprising the Hawks and knocking them out of the playoffs in the first round. Uh, someone that obviously, as you mentioned, uh, Coach Moss is very familiar with his old stomping grounds. Uh, but we see them every year, and they always give the Hawks a difficult time. Uh, they have fallen on some hard times this year. They're only one in eight. Uh, they're capable of putting some uh, points on the board. Sounds familiar from the last couple of weeks. Every team we play in this district seems like they can put ports on the board. Uh, senior Ashland Baker uh, is, can throw the ball. He can run the ball. He's got like 14 touchdown passes on the air. But the big stud is the wide receiver, Germanic Smith. That guy's got over 1,000 yards receiving and something like 14 touchdowns himself. Uh, he's been on the um, uh, varsity roster for three years now. And we've run into him for three years, and he's always given the Hawks fits. So what do the Hawks need to do? Well. Uh, let's let's keep the momentum going. Um, it should be a victory, but more more than that, uh, we got to stay healthy. We don't want any more Rico Henderson. So uh, we've got our playoff spot secure. We already know what we're going to be. We already know uh, uh, more than likely who we're going to play. Uh, so let's come out of this game. Yeah, a victory would be, be nice, but more than that, let's come out of this game healthy. Do you see all the starters playing this game, or do you figure we're going to see what we saw last week where we kind of pull them at halftime? And if this game goes away that we're both thinking, are we going to pull them at halftime and get ready for the playoffs in that regard? Well, if I'm the coach, uh, they probably don't play past the first quarter. Uh, I don't want any more, especially the, the guys, the, the seniors, the big guys that we're really depending on. I don't want any more injuries. Um, knowing this coach and staff, they'll probably play into the second quarter, and then uh, we'll start getting some of our backups in. We got some good kids that uh, it'll be good for them to get some playing time now, some experience. They probably won't see that much in the playoffs, uh, so it'll be good now for them to get varsity playing time. Kanan Smith, Tanner McAllister, these guys that uh, we'll be counting on next year. Uh, let them see some time. Let them tote the rock a little bit. Let them uh, get some varsity experience so that they have that under their belt, and at the same time, save our big horses for the playoffs. No injuries. 
<laughs> Let's see what Coach Moss says about what might you might see on Thursday night. We'd love to do that. You never can tell how a game goes. Uh, you know, being the last game for their seniors, also they're they have nothing to lose. You know, they're going to go out and give their best. Uh, they're going to play hard. You know, you got to expect that from a team. So you never know. But for us, you know, that would be a good scenario that if we could do that, we could uh, come out aggressive, come out physical, be hard, uh, play well on both sides of the ball, and and eliminate their big plays. I've got a really great receiver. Um, if we can do that, and uh, and then again get our backups some some great playing time. That's um, you know the other night the number of reps our backups were able to get. Uh, you know you get in games like that. The, we've had two games this year where we actually had a running clock in the second half. Just um, you know to limit limit us scoring seventy points, and uh, but at the same time just to get get the teams off the field because um, the game is over at that point. So. And we mentioned the playoffs are coming up here in two weeks. Senior Heath Hawks will be a part of the postseason party. Of course, they already have their seed locked down. Steve, other than maybe playing for a district championship this week if Poteet loses to Terrell, which probably won't happen. The Heath Hawks are already in. They know what's going to happen. They don't know their opponent quite yet, but it's kind of looking more and more like it might be somebody that we're looking forward to. Who could they be playing in the first round and where would might be they be playing? Well, you're looking at 11-5A. Uh, that's the district that we're matched up against, and it'll be one of two teams, Carrollton Creekview, Carrollton Newman Smith. They play Friday night, so basically the loser of that game will be the number two seed out of that uh, uh, district the Division One number two seed, and that's who the Hawks will match up with. You're probably looking at Newman Smith. They got beat pretty good by Woodrow Wilson last Friday night. Uh, Creekview is probably a little bit better than they are this year. Never know what happens when the lights goes on, but uh, if I had to uh, look into the crystal ball, probably looking at Newman Smith. Venue hasn't been set yet. I know Coach, Coach Moss is really pushing to do it Friday night. Uh, looking at Mesquite, Wiley, a couple of the area stadiums to do that. So uh, more than likely looking at next Friday night at a stadium that won't be too far away. Exciting times for sure. Are you excited about the postseason? Oh, yeah, I'm ready to get rolling. The last couple of weeks, Hawks have played so well, I'm uh, looking for something a little tighter and something uh, more fun to call out of the booth. So, yes, I am looking forward to the playoffs. We don't want you bored up there. We want to get you excited up <laughs> yes. there for sure. And don't forget, if you want to listen to the game on Thursday night, it's www.rockwallisd.com. Of course, you can log on there after the game to check out where the Hawks will play in their first round matchup. It's going to be exciting times at Heath High School. And don't forget, Next Monday, we will move the program to Rockwall Sports Center. Steve Deere will be there to sign some autographs, take some pictures, oh, yeah. kiss some babies, the usual. You know, I'm your sure fans. I'll be out the door, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to come out, don't skip school, though. That's all we got to say. <laughs> don't skip school for that. So we'll see you next Monday at the Rockwall Sports Center. Until then, we'll see you next week where the playoffs will officially be underway. Thanks again, everybody.